Hello everyone, Coach Lockie here and welcome to the video. So a few things first, I've got a few issues. Mark's away and gone on a little trip by himself to see the guys at Swing Cat and left me with no cameras. I have bought one and I've got one coming. The body's here, but not the lens yet. So we're gonna be filming this today on my iPhone 13 Pro. What can an iPhone 13 Pro do on a YouTube video? Let's test it and find out, shall we? Issue number two. I was out in the garden this weekend. Look, it's not just one hand, it's both. And that one, even though it's smaller, hurts the most. And I'm struggling to grip a golf club. So today's YouTube video is gonna be on putting. Now I would go outside and do this, but unfortunately it's been raining and the golf course is closed. Should we start with some stats and see what you guys down that lens are doing and see what sort of targets you're at and what you're aiming to try and get to to lower those scores? Before I forget though, I went into my little goodie bag at home before I came and found this little beauty. And that is today's giveaway prize. <laughs> Stop it, goat. Now, it is one of my old putters, and it is one of the ones that I had a little bit shorter, so whoever the winner is, feel free to take it to your local pro shop and get it all lengthened back up again. And you know what to do to enter. You need to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and turn that bell notification on as well, so you know when I upload new videos to the channel. And lastly, to enter, we need you to comment down below What's your lowest ever score? What's the best round you've ever had? And even tell me where it was also. Where was your best round ever? You must love that golf course, wherever it is in the world. Should we start off with some stats then? And these are all provided by shot scopes over millions and millions of shots. Um, average holes per three putt, and I think this is the biggest key to you guys lowering your score, especially those higher handicaps. Average holes per three putt. A scratch handicap is averaging 36 holes per three putt, whereas a 20 and 25 handicap is 6.5 and 6.8 holes. So you higher handicaps down that lens are possibly having three or more three putts per 18 holes. And why is that? And if we look at some more data, the average distance of a second putt in a three putt for an eight handicap is 5.8 feet. I don't actually have what it is for a scratch handicap, but a 20 handicap average second putt length of 8.9 feet. That's a long way. And just think, PGA Tour, nine feet, one putt percentage, 43%. <laughs> You guys are going to be having a lot of three putts if that's what your average distance left of the hole is. And this is a really interesting point, I think. Your average first putt being 18.5 feet for all golfers, and that's from all, again, those stats on the ShotScope database. Once you're at 20 feet, you need to be going lag mode. Most three putts are made from 20 feet or more. You can see a massive jump from 20 feet and under, and then you pop to 30 feet, there's 10% more chance, all the way up to more than 40% chance of free putty when you're at 50 feet. So once you hit that 20 foot mark, let's think lag putt, two putt, walk on. If it drops in, great, but two putt is key. Right, that's enough of the boring stat stuff, isn't it, eh? What's that, John? You want some more drills? Ugh. Putting drills, you say? Come on then. Drill number one that I really like to do, and this is using my pressure putt trainer from Putt Out. Again, you can do this on a normal hole on the putting green, wherever you like, but I use this because it gives me a real good indication of how far past this ball might be going if I hit the hole. So first of all, I try and get my ball just to literally touch the pressure putt trainer. Die it on there, hardly any pace, and then get one rolling up as close to the top of the pressure putt trainer as I can and get it rolling back towards me. The best thing about this drill is if you're able to pick and choose how you want that ball to be going towards the hole, either speedy or dribbling up to the hole, you'll be able to pick different lines that you want. So if you've got a breaking putt and you just need to die it up to the edge of the hole, you can. These are the options you're gonna be giving yourself if you're skilled at judging that distance control. If you wanna do this drill outside on a normal hole, get that ball to literally dribble in the front edge and then 
smash into the back of the hole. That's how I do it on an actual putting green also. That is my number one drill to start with. Next distance control drill I like to do on the large putt out mat is we've got 10 feet marks here and I like to start from the beginning go all the way back to the 10 feet and try and get a ball to finish in the hole. I'm not going to start right at the front as I'm not going to hit all 10 putts, but I'm varying the length up. Stop, lovely, perfect weight in the hole. And then I move back, all the way back to the 10 feet mark. How many can I get out of 10? Let me know in the comments down below. If you've got a large putting mat, give this little drill a go. Two out of two. Perhaps I will do all of them if I'm going to hold them all. Third putt, and I'll go back stage by stage, changing the dis uh, speed of my putter, changing the length of my stroke. Stop. Oh, my. I haven't missed yet. Did I just putt from this one? I can't even remember where I'm putting from. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I'll go back one, make it a bit tougher. Will I get this length of stroke getting longer as I start to go away? S tempo and rhythm not really changing. I'm literally just changing the length of my stroke to change the speed. Oh, just short. And that's another drill that I love to do at home when I'm practicing my distance control. I can change the speed. I can change the length of my stroke. Tempo generally feels the same every time, no matter what the distance is, my tempo is quite tick-tock like, but the length of stroke, speed of stroke is gonna be changing to get that ball to be going different distances. Give that a go, like I said, in the comments. Can you get 10 out of 10 on your large putting mat? Now you've probably seen this one before. People like Tiger Woods you see doing this with tees either side of your putter. I'm gonna put a couple of chromies either side, give yourself a bit of a margin for error. You can make it as tough or as hard as you want. So balls either side of that putter, again, tees, doesn't matter what it is. This is really simple. Return that putter without hitting those balls either side. I have a tendency to tow my putt, so I have to really think. I always have to try and return it a bit closer to the outside one, like I have there. And that distance control is perfect. So there's three really simple distance control drills that you can take away, use on the putting green, at home, wherever it might be. I'm always on my putt out mat, trying to learn that speed control. That's the key, because there's low hanging fruit there, people, as Mark likes to say, that you can just pick off, knock a few shots off your scores, and get those handicaps coming down. Did anyone notice this platinum putt out? <laughs> this thing is weighty, but looks super cool, doesn't it? It's also lunchtime, so time to pack up and shoot home. Made it back home, back in my office, in my comfies. And let's give you a couple of swing tips also before I finish this video on possibly how you can improve your distance control again. First thing I want you to do is in your pre-shot routine, if you do practice strokes, I want you to look at the hole. I want you to do your practice strokes, focusing on that hole and not your stroke. So really get an idea of how hard you want to move that putter to get that ball towards your target and then step in, try and repeat that feel that you're trying to do. And if you want to take that a little bit further, try heads up putting. Mark did a podcast with Sasho McKenzie, really, really clever guy who works with Ping. He did a study on people just looking at the hole and their distance control. And I think it was something like 70, 80% improved their distance control when just focusing solely on the hole. And the second thing that I want you to think about is your grip and how you hold it. So there's lots of specialized grips out there, claw grip, prayer grip, overlapping, all these sorts of grips in putting. But what I find with my students is with these specialized grips like the prayer grip and the claw grip, because they're designed for more face control and delivering that putter in the right place every time, it's very hard to get the weight and distance control on those longer putts. So what I get my students to do if they've got a grip like a prayer grip, claw grip, overlapping, 
is to find a distance that they're comfortable at. And as soon as you go past that distance where you're not comfortable, go back to your normal golf grip. You might have seen Rory trying this recently as well on the course vlog. So he's literally gone back to his normal grip. You can get some wrist hinge, you can move that putter quicker and be a little more free, not thinking about technique so much. So next time you can get on a practice putting green, get to some longer putts, 20, 30 feet, and change your grip back to a normal one and see if it allows you to move that putter head at the right speed, instead of doing these specialized putter grips throughout every single putt. Bit of everything there for you, drills slash games, pre-shot routine ideas, and also swing ideas, grip ideas, those sorts of things. Let me know in the comments down below which ones help you the most. And if you do a certain thing to help you improve your distance control, I'd love to hear what your ideas are as well. Also in the comments down below, how's my iPhone 13 done? Is it up to scratch or not? Is it too fuzzy? It does need a lot of light, so apologies if it is a bit grainy, but I've had notifications. All the rest of my camera bits are on the way. So next video, you have what you want. 4K, HD, you name it. I've left a giveaway putter in the car as well. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below what your best round is if you wanna be in with a chance of winning that putter. As always, thanks everyone for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.